Bunch of Courts, tell me where you at your motivation guy. That's right, guys. I am back, the one and only Keith Allen, to pump you guys up, to motivate you, to inspire you, and to encourage you to walk in, in just good energy, man, and just be light. You know, I don't know what's coming against you or if you're discouraged because you feel like you're not getting better at the game, but you know what? Practice makes perfect. And the best players in the world, man, they have to learn how to fail in order to be good. And sometimes we have to learn how to fail in order to be the best people that we can be. All right. So I just want to let you know that your failure is working out for you. So just keep going. Do not give up ever. Just try to be better every single day. And I'm telling you, man, you're going to be proud of yourself. So I'm here today to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips that's going to help you guys become the next best Fortnite player. You know, competitions are tough, but the glory of rising up the ranks is as well worth the effort for any player wanting to make a name for themselves. They need every advantage they can get. And really what that means is playing like the pros they look up to. And so if you're a rookie playing on console, you might be tempted to switch over to PC. So today, we're going to help you guys swap over from a controller to a mouse and keyboard. You guys ready for this? We'll get you a bunch of crunch. All right, now you're ready. Let's get this going. Okay, so there are many reasons why players, you know, would want to make this switch from controller to keyboard and mouse, right? And in many cases, you know, this is because they used to play on consoles, but finally decided to upgrade to a gaming PC. Having a PC can be a great way of customizing your settings even further, and it can be a good way to get you ready for competition. You know, other times pros make the switch to improve their building skills. After all, like a keyboard is always recommended if you want fast builds and more efficiency as a tarper. So you might also want the freedom of being able to move your crosshairs quickly to land those precise shots. Whatever the reason though, your next task is going to be learning to use a keyboard and mouse so that you can successfully continue your way towards becoming a professional Fortnite player. And you can if you don't give up and you try really, really hard. I'm telling you, keep going. Speaking of precise shots, like how would you like to improve your aim? Click on the link below to visit AimLab. You can download this program and start working on your aim right away and some great exercise routines. You can also even customize them yourself to fit your needs. AimLab is a great way for anyone wanting to up their skills in some of the most popular games out there, such as Fortnite, Warzone, and Valorant. All right, so enough about that. Let's talk about setups. You know, when making the switch to keyboard and mouse, the change can feel a bit drastic at first. After all, using controller for so long and having every button so optimally placed can be quite comfortable. Now, you have so many keys to really keep track of. Not only that, but you also have your mouse in a separate hand with many options for having buttons on them as well. So there are so many other ways to enhance your game experience and that includes the type of keyboard that you intend to use. You know, one option that you could consider for gaming would be a half keyboard. These as the name would imply, right? Like only offer the left side keys and the space bar. Despite missing half his keys, these can actually be quite beneficial for setting up. For starters, he will only ever use a finite number of keys. So having a full keyboard while the standard isn't the only viable option. Also, having your keyboard take up less space is going to give you guys more room to move your mouse. And in a third person shooter, this will allow you more freedom and flexibility. If you guys intend on getting a mouse with extra buttons on the side, it's always the best to keep it simple. You know, while it can be tempting to have a mouse with an entire dial pad on the side, and yes, they do exist, this will most likely just overcomplicate things for you. I'm telling you. So instead, just try getting two extra buttons on the side. It gives you guys a few more options to play around with, and it doesn't require your brain to remember even more right hand functions. All right, so with the transition to keyboard, you're going to have so many choices for keybinds. So what exactly is the secret keybind setting that's gonna make you a legend? Well, the truth is there is no secret, guys. Every single player is different. And while there are some preferences amongst pros, each one needs to play to their own strengths. You know, the most important thing to keep in mind when choosing your keybinds is that you feel comfortable with the choices that you make. Comfort though, it really comes in two different ways. You know, comfort in regards to your confidence and comfort in regards to the placement of your hands. You know, with hands, you know, to varying different sizes, a key that is easy to reach for one player might require a little more work for another. And so if you still want to try out some, you know, preset keybinds, then feel free to look up what the pros have used in the past. I'm telling you, it helps. There are dozens of pros out there and experimenting with their keybinds can be a really nice entry point for someone who's trying to find their own preferences. However, I will say this, if you want a word of advice, take this one, all right? No matter what keybinds you end up using, the best ones will make use of all your fingers. You know, it's also best that you manage minimize multitasking by having each finger do a separate function rather than one finger needing to move between buttons. This is going to increase your reaction time guys and it's going to leave less room in between functions. Changing from controller to keyboard and mouse can be a process man. Luckily if you've been playing Fortnite for a while now then the job is pretty much half done. Like you already have the knowledge of how the game works and you might even have some skills you didn't even know how to use. The goal 
here is to transition those skills from one type of control to another. So the truth is, is that it's just all about muscle memory. And the sooner you get used to it, the quicker you can start relearning those skills. All right, so before you get started, try to play a few matches of Battle Royale. Just get accustomed with to the default settings and keybinds. And eventually you should have a general understanding on how to use your new controls. And you're gonna find that your craft is a bit less sloppy. So figure out which functions you know you seem to understand right off the bat and which ones that you're causing you to stumble. This can be a great way to really just be aware uh, of your weaknesses and when you're entering your new control scheme. After all, even with controllers, there's just always some functions you will just automatically understand and others you need to remind yourself about. Preferably, you want to do this before you go on and start playing around with your settings. Like you need to start building up your skills from the ground up. But I will say this, you know, once you've mastered your controls, guys, you can just go and just try to customize your settings to whatever allows you more freedom and movement. Once again, check out the sensitivities the pros are using, specifically the ones playing on keyboard and mouse. Since this time, you're going to be using more than a thumb to control your view. You're going to want settings that really go well with your aim movement. Once you've learned the basics of your controls, it's time to hit creative. This is going to help you master the specific skill sets that you need to make it far in Battle Royale. Mastering your mechanics seems a lot harder than it really is, but with the new control scheme, you're going to have to work twice as hard. First off, start on your own island and just get accustomed to the bindings for builds, all right? Just keep building a ramp you know, up and just adding a floor every now and then. Use every basic build so you know what key does what. Are your fingers reacting correctly? Are you succeeding in building that stairway up into the sky? If you feel like you're having trouble with the key bindings, then you could just adjust them here until you find the right one. Once you've mastered the basic builds, you can start working on the more complex techniques. You know, the best place to do that is on Raiders 464's training map. This has helped me so much. Just keep in mind, you know, the techniques are all the same regardless of whether or not you use a controller or a keyboard and mouse. The only thing stopping you from getting it down perfectly is just muscle memory. So by pushing yourself harder and doing repetitive movements in the exercise routines, you're going to, without a doubt, learn the skills you need to really master the keyboard and mouse. Creative is also the perfect place to do those 1v1s. But don't stop there. Also try out some other game modes which has the pit. You know, with players constantly just, you know, dropping down on you from above and just a vast array of equipment to really mess around with, you can get accustomed to doing those 360 turns or just working your reaction time. Speaking of training, you know, there are some challenges that come from making the switch. And if you've primarily played on a controller, you're going to notice them. You know, the first, of course, was getting used to this, the new layout of the controls. But, you know, the second is a bit more low key if you've never noticed it before. Like this, of course, is the lack of aim assist. So if you've been playing competitively, then you know the benefits of aim assist. You definitely know it, man. I know you do. Your crosshair will automatically move closer to your opponent when raising your weapon. And while this detail is just kind of small, it does actually make a difference in how you aim. So with keyboard and mouse, you're going to have more control over your aim, but you're going to need to train more to get the muscle memory down correctly. This time, rather than just moving your thumb, you're going to be moving your entire hand. This means the muscle memory will be a combination of your wrist and your aim. Trust me, guys, you're going to feel the difference. The mouse will always be a bit more sensitive to your movement. And unlike the thumbstick, it doesn't snap back into place once you're done with it. Don't worry, though. Like there are plenty of exercise routines to really work on creative, which can help you in different scenarios. And so fighting players in a 1v1 can help you keep your aim locked in your opponents as they fight you back. I will say this, though. However, if you want to train specific scenarios such as aiming after making a quick edit or just trying to hit your opponent for that 200 shot, you need constant exposure to these scenarios so you can get used to them. If you're interested in keeping track of your progress during aim training, don't forget to try out Aim Lab. It's going to show you how well your aim was during each session and help you identify where you need the most improvement. A bunch of Chris Charming, that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, this is your motivation guy, the one and only Keith Allen, the one who believes in you, the one who is rooting for you. Oh, and I want to tell you this, I am your number one fan. I really am. So keep going. Going. Don't give up on your dreams. Uh, keep moving forward past any negative circumstance in your life, man. There's something great on the inside of you. I know there is. So let it out. Keep going. And uh, man, just never quit. Subscribe to the channel if you guys like the video. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.